Hey guys, this is the mini flash monkey. This is without a doubt one of my favorite flies. I have seen brown trout and smallmouth bass completely launch themselves out of the water to try and kill this thing. It is so much fun to fish. With all the flash material and the peacock curl across the back, you can see it through the entire water column and you will see fish come up and move and just crush it. It is insanely fun. And I have Russ Madden to thank for developing the original Flash Monkey. And without Russ, we wouldn't have the mini today. So without further ado, Let's get tying. I'm gonna start with a 2460 number four. I've got my Vivas 100 thread. All right, so first thing, for the flash monkey, we need a lot of flash, but what you gotta be concerned about is the material getting wrapped around. So I'm gonna start with some bucktail and I'm going to create a base in order to ensure that that material doesn't wrap around the hook all the time, which would drive all of us crazy. So I've just got uh, about a pencil width of material. Just laying it on the hook. I'm gonna do some loose wraps and progressively tighten it down. And I'm gonna clip off the excess and then I'm gonna go right up and wrap right through that material, just basically locking it into position. And we're not worried about it looking pretty. We're not worried about it spreading all over the place. Just as we get to the back of the hook, we'll be able to manipulate that material how we want it. So, I'm at the back of the, the hook now. I'm just gonna basically push it down, do a couple loose wraps. And there we go. All right, looks good. So next, flash. I've got all sorts of different types of flashaboo. I've got silver and I've got pearl. And basically, I'm just gonna pull a couple strands of each. There is no magic formula, maybe five and five, 10 and 10, whatever flash material you have around that you think looks great, just use it. And I'm looking to put about three and a half, four inches out the back, and I will trim it to the size that I want after the rest of the fly is built. Again, it's a flash monkey. <laughs> So you don't want to be nervous about the total amount of flash material that you lay down. It is going to scream out and you're going to, in the back of your mind, be saying this is way too much flash. And I just have another type of flash boo that I'm going to put in there as well. Again, you can't have too much. All right. So last bit, doubling it over, doubling it over, pulling tight, and wrapping it in place. All right, that looks good. All right, now I'm gonna come up halfway, half the distance, and I'm just gonna put on either side, I'm using my uh, UV bucktail again, and on either side of the hook shank, I'm gonna basically put bumpers on. And what I mean by that, just material to help keep that flash in line. And then eventually what'll happen is it'll bend around the hook too, helping to create somewhat of a belly. Now what I don't want it to do is to come on top of the hook itself. If it gets on top of the hook, it kind of defeats the, the two-tone purpose. All right, so I got it locked into position. It looks good. 
do the same thing, grab a small amount, just like uh, an eighth of an inch or so, very small. I'll show you guys. Again, we're just looking for the material to be sparse in nature. Um, I'm not looking for a huge amount. Remember, we want this to be suggestive. Don't want it to be on there so thick that you can't see through. That just defeats the fly. Your fly won't move. It'll just look like crap in the water itself. All right, so that's good. Now notice the top is still, you can see that flash and that's good because now we're gonna work on the, the two-tone. Now I'm going to take some olive marabou. I like it nice and wispy. Just stripping off some of that marabou. Laying it right across the top of the fly. Looks good. Two loose wraps. Make sure it's still on top. Pinch. Good. All right. So that was all done on the half. Now I'm moving up. I've got about uh, two hook eyes in there. Make sure my material is where I want it. That looks good. And now I'm gonna do the same. Grabbing my UV bucktail. Taking just a small amount here. Clip it off, putting it right on the side, lining my tips up here. Looks good. Right along the side, hold it with my thumb and my forefinger, two, three, loose wraps, pinch it down. Looks good. This side, same thing, UV. Just call them deer hair bumpers, keeping everything in line. Got that material, got it all aligned right along the side. Hold it between my finger and thumb. Three, four loose wraps, cinch it nice and tight. Make sure that material is where you want it. Looks good. Everything is locked in position. Okay. Now the peacock curl that I have is UV peacock curl. And I don't have that much left, but what do I have there? Maybe 15 different strands. I'm gonna pick the short stuff out. And go right across and I want that to go out the back of the, the hook. About two to three times the length of the hook itself. So you one, two, maybe two and a half. Backward. You want to go loose and now tight. At least you got to see what happens when you do it backwards and how it splays out. That's the value of doing those loose wraps and then coming tight. Now, the other thing that I want to do here is I want to have a little bit of a color differentiator on the bottom there. And this just happens to be um, cream marabou. And that color differentiator will just help give, take away a little bit of that stark white contrast on the bottom and really give it a nice little accent. You don't have to do it. It's just something that takes you 30 seconds 
and really makes your fly just kind of, in, in my mind, in my eyes, come alive. All right, that looks great. All right, so now I'm just gonna glue the thread to a quick whip finish and we're good. And that's just Gorilla Glue that I use, just plain old super glue. Alright, back part of the fly is done. Whenever I'm around glue, I always use a razor blade to save my scissors. Okay. Next, I want to connect that uh, back hook. I'm going to start by using some Orvis 25 pound mono. You can use whatever mono you want. And then I'm also going to use some 8 aught beads that I got from Michaels. These are multicolors. Um, when I pulled them out, look at the draw, I happened to get uh, four uh, copper. So that's what I'm going to use. I don't think it, uh, it matters much. So I'm just going to take the mono. Put it through the back hook and then just feed it back through those beads. Okay, equidistant now, and I'm just gonna pull to put a little kink in there. Okay, so now we're ready for the, the front hook. Now the front hook is a Gamagatsu 230409 number two. And it's short shank and it is wide gap. And this hook is incredible. And the only thing that I really need to worry about when I'm tying this front is connecting my thread, my Vivas 100 with that tip because it is razor sharp and it'll just pop it right off. All right, so just laying down a base. Find that it makes it easier when I'm putting my eyes on there. And as far as eyes, I'm using some hairline bead chain size medium in black. And I'm going to use a total of four and they will go on the bottom. And I'm just gonna lash them down just like you would any dumbbell eyes. There's lots of videos on how to do it, so I'm not really gonna walk you through the process. I'm just gonna do it. So I do eight figure eights, then I go underneath twice, and then I cinch, come in front, and then I do the same thing trying to maintain a lot of pressure on those eyes. All right, so just a couple more wraps. Good, lash it down. And I always bring my mono up, which you'll see in a minute. I hit it with super glue, so even if it's not perfectly locked in, by the time I end up putting everything together, it is. All right, so here's the, the rear hook. And the biggest thing that I want to maintain here is the gap and the distance between this hook and the back hook. If you don't, what will happen is you'll get uh, strikes on the fly and you won't connect. And you've got to maintain at least an inch gap between the bend of the hook and the tip of the hook here. And uh, looks like I have it, so I'm gonna do some loose wraps just to make sure that I can do my final alignment. So I'm just doing four loose wraps. Looks good. Time to cinch. And this is where, you know, that Vivas 100 thread really comes in handy. You can pull down and crank it, which is awesome. All right, so right around the front and then right to the back Come in tight on that back side and just latch it down. All right, 
time to clip off that mono. Okay. Good. I'm gonna use my hair clip to hold everything out of the way. And I'm gonna adjust the camera angle a little bit so you guys are able to see the back side of that fly too. All right, there we go. I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit of super glue. Lock everything down and then wrap over tight. Make sure things are nice and aligned. And you don't have to go crazy on the super glue. In fact, super glue works much better just with some thin, you know, thin application and thin coats. All right, get it right where you want it because it's not going to move after you get it locked and glued. Nice and level, looks good. Okay, so next I'm gonna use my UV bucktail and I'm gonna create some collars basically, or some spots right around the, the bottom to hold everything in line. And I'm going to split my bucktail, which I've got about a quarter of an inch into halves. Same thing that I've been doing, I'm going to align the tips as best I can just by pinching the top and then pulling the bottom out. That looks good. And I'm going to go back about half the distance on my little marabou or about a quarter inch into the fly itself. Right, there's one. And this time I'm going to pull tight because I want that white belly material to splay out. check make sure that it's more along the side than it is in the center itself and I don't want it impeding the movement of the fly that's what I was just checking and that looks that looks good it's just the tips that are there so again I'm gonna align these tips make sure that everything is good and I'm coming right on the side again I'm gonna do about the same length as I had on the other side. That's good. Pinch it into place. Hit it once. Pull tight. Twice. Pull tight. Remember this is different, right? Because I want it to splay out. I don't want it to go nice and right along the side. I want it to kick out. Again, I don't want it impeding the motion of the material itself. Okay, so I got the um, bucktail in there. Next I'm going to do my flashaboo. I've got my standard silver. I'm just going to take a couple pieces here. This is going to be a much shorter length. I got some there. Double it over. Out the back. Looks good. And I'm gonna use this Flashaboo. This is called Flashaboo Mirage. And what you'll notice is that this material is incredibly flashy. It just refracts light like crazy. And I want this flash only to go back about um, a quarter inch under the top of that fly and I'm just going to clip it, clip it off, quarter inch onto that back section. That looks good and I'm just going to lay down just a little more. Again, it is a flash monkey so no harm in doing that. Position. 
and pull it back. All right, that looks great. So we've got the material there, the Mirage, and the regular Flash of Boo. Looks nice. And now I'm gonna put down a little piece of Marabou in olive. I'm just gonna grab a chunk. And I've got about an inch worth of material here. Do the same thing that I did on the back part. Couple loose wraps, two loose wraps. Make sure your material is aligned. Go underneath it and then do some tight wraps. Boom. Secured. Looks good. All right. Next, I'm going to put in just a little hint of a of a throat. And what I want to use is uh, laser dub in red. I don't want too much. I don't want it to be overbearing, but I do want to be able to see that red highlight on the bottom. I'm just gonna bend it over, pull it down, and then I can put it exactly where I want it on the fly. Wrap over, looks good. Double check to make sure it's aligned in center. That's exactly where I want it. And now I'm gonna take uh, an opportunity just to get rid of that total amount because I don't want all of it, I just want a throat. So I'm just gonna use my little anvil scissors here do a really nice job of thinning material without cutting it all at once. Okay, so now I got my throat in. That looks great. And next I'm going to use some cream marabou. I just want that little difference in that throat color. And I don't want it overbearing, an overbearing amount. Just enough to kind of cover that red a little bit. And I'll get the length right. I'll just do some loose wraps, take a look at it, and then secure everything into position. So I want to come up just to the point where the, the tips are about um, an eighth of an inch beyond the hook there. Okay. Looks good. I'm gonna secure it by coming in front twice, really pulling down on that. And I'm just gonna cut it, cut it off. And this doesn't have to look really nice here. Um, and what I mean is we're gonna cover it with uh, the brush material. So as long as we get our proportions right, we get um, things covered the way that we want as far as um, the marabou covering the, the throat, the body, etc. And I'm actually gonna put just a little more in there to make sure that I got it nice and covered. And that's that's really what we're what I'm worried about now. I'm not worried about everything that's getting tied right onto the the head and making sure that that looks good because again that's going to be covered with the brush and I can't stress this enough I mean now is the time right as you're tying to make sure you have the right material to make sure that you have the proportions right to go back to stop anything that you're doing evaluate how it's going to look when it's all blended together because once it's tied you really can't do anything, right? Once you lock it all, all into position. All right, that looks really nice. I'm very happy with that. Okay, everything is locked in there. Looks good. And now I'm going to put in my peacock curl. So 
as I mentioned at the beginning, I don't have much left. This is going to kill all the UV material. And I'm just going to put down a little bit more, a little thicker than I had in the back. And I want it to go about halfway down the, the hook shank. And again, all the tips don't have to be even. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can spend a minute aligning them, especially if you got some shorties. But I want it to go down about half the length here. That looks good. I'm going to do some loose wraps in the front, right? If you don't do the loose wraps and you tighten it, it splays out. Now I'm going to put in a couple wraps underneath and now I'm going to cinch it down. And that keeps, it's a really cool trick, it keeps everything tight, keeps it from blowing out. Okay, that looks good. All right, now it's time to actually build the brush. So the brush itself is made out of a, a material from Just Add Water. It's a flash blend bait fish brush in bronze back and I get the, the five inch. And the reason why I do is because with the loop that I'm gonna put in here, the dubbing loop, I'm gonna be able to create my own brush and I can do multiple brushes with this five inch material as opposed to let's say buying a two inch brush and only being able to use that. This only takes a couple seconds to build a brush you get to build it to the size that you want, the dimensions that you want. And for me, you know, that's just, that's priceless. So, I've got about an inch and a half or so of material. And I'm gonna want the fibers at the top to be longer because I want them to blend back into the back of the fly. And at the front, I don't need them that long, but I do want them dense. And the thing that you decide right now with your brush and the way that you build it is how much material in action, how easy it's gonna be to cast. Because if you put a very sparse head, you can imagine your fly is just gonna track straight in the water itself. And if you do a very thick head, it's going to pause significantly and move um, quite a bit in the water or stall out, which allows your back end to kick around. All right, now I'm gonna use my D-loop tweezers. These are by Loon. Just gonna scoop it into place. Remember what I'm trying to do, I want the back end of this fly or the back end of this loop to be longer, right? I want it to be longer in length, so I'm going to trim it with that in mind. So I'm going to start at what will be the head, and I'm just going to do a taper forward, and then I'm going to stop, and I'm going to leave all those long fibers because I want them to go out the back of the fly itself. All right, I'm just going to put that down for a second. Bring my fly back. I'm gonna do a dubbing loop. In this case, I'm doing about a four inch loop. I'm gonna tie it off at the head. And then I'm gonna put my bobbin in the cradle and then we're gonna actually spin the dubbing loop. All right, thread is set. Now, I like just taking um, a Copix marker, this one happens to be copper, and hitting the thread. The reason why I like to do that is I don't want the white thread itself going through. I always tie with white thread, and I always use Copic markers to, uh, to blend the material and the color that I want. All right, so I've got my D-loop tweezers. I've got my loop, and I'm gonna feed it in. Remember, I want the long fibers going out the back. I'm gonna take my Stoneflow Roto Dubber. And 
and now I'm gonna put my materials in and I don't use any sort of material to hold you know my materials in place so I don't use any sort of wax I don't use anything because I like to be able to push it get it into position the way I want it before I start spinning it All right now the trick with spinning is that you just take your time when you start you want to increase the the tension increase the spins slowly to make sure that you don't blow materials out of your wraps out of your loop which is easy to do if you just start spinning at full speed let me see some things are getting caught just take my time to adjust it now all right now I can really start spinning good I'm gonna take velcro pull everything out as best I can I want those fibers free Alright, that looks really good. Very happy with how that brush looks. And do my best to pull everything back because I want it to go one direction. And now I'm going to use my rotary just to go around. Be careful of that hook point not to pop my thread. Being careful to pull my material back. Take my time. And I'm putting my wraps sequentially in front of one another and I would rather have too much material in my brush than not enough and get caught you can always you know stop your your wrapping but you you know it's just it would be a challenge to do a second dubbing loop this is looking good I think I'm gonna do one more wrap of material Again, you guys know I'm a fan of translucency. I want the material to flow. For the head, I want there to be a little bulk, but I don't want it to be too crazy. Okay, that looks really good. I'm happy with the density. I'm happy with how the material looks. I'm gonna take my bobbin out, and now I'm going to come behind my loop twice loosely and now I'm going to go underneath it once and tighten twice tighten so that's locked I'm gonna clip this off and now I'm gonna do my best to hold my materials back I'm gonna hit my thread with the copper copix Good. Got everything back. Two more loops in front, cinch. And I'm just gonna do that again. All right, now let's hit it with some super glue. Then we'll wrap it, do a whip finish, and then pick the materials out and do a quick trim. We are very close to being done here. All right, get that glue right up in there, cinch it into place, whip finish. Razor, so I'm just gonna hit it being careful not to get any glue all right now I'm gonna pick it get as much of that material out as possible and even though you know we took our time wrapping we you know preened the material back it's always good just to come through pick the material out because there's always some stuck, no matter how careful you are, and just come at it at different angles, and you'll notice that there are fibers that are caught. And it won't be 100% perfect, but that's okay. 
All right, um, I'm gonna clean the head now. I'm just gonna hit it real quick with the, the lighter to get rid of that miscellaneous material. Good. All right, now for the trim. Just gonna come in at a 45 degree angle to the head. I'm careful, I don't wanna hit the material that kind of blends everything together right on the back of the fly itself. And then on the bottom, same thing, kind of that 45 degree angle. And then I wanna cut it to the point where the majority of the fibers, especially those that are around the hook, and I don't think that would stop a fish from striking. I just never like anything in front of that hook. And I'm going right along the side, even with the, the bead chain. Okay, and we are done. All right, so this fly is one of my favorites of all time. I've never seen uh, fish hit and be more um, aggressive. And in the end, this fly is really designed to do hardcore jerk strips or to burn the fly, bring it in, you know, smack it down, bring it in fast, and then just um, pause it. And that pause really is where the fish will come in and they'll just give it an absolute um, kill shot. And the other way, which I, again, I absolutely love to fish this fly, and I'm just gonna trim off these, uh, this flash material right off the back to get it even is to do um, a, a zigzag retrieve. And what I mean by that is I'll actually uh, cast my fly out and I will take my rod tip and I'll move my rod tip back and forth in the water, holding my rod tip up like I'm Euro nymphing. And what I'm trying to do is create like a, uh, a Zara spook motion with this fly so that it zigzags back and forth in the water and I've never seen brown trout uh, destroy a fly like that. When you pause it, it you know it looks like a, a, a minnow that's trying to escape, and they just absolutely uh, destroy it. I love this fly. This is. Um, I, I hope you guys too. Um, I hope you really enjoyed the video. And uh, thanks for tying. And thanks for hanging out with me. See you guys.